In this video, we're going to take a look at successful unit testing with Makito, and that is true unit testing without dependencies. So we're going to look at why, what plugins we need, how to test, and then in a later video, we're going to take a look at unit testing coverage as well. But first, what is a unit test? We're testing one class in isolation of the others, and we want it to be easy to run. It's not an integration test that's testing how classes work with each other or how a whole series of functions work, and it's not a UI test. We're specifically testing one class. And when we do this, we have to remove excuses on why we can't test one class. Maybe we say, well, we need the application server running. We need the database running. We're going to take all of those dependencies out with a tool called Makito. So why do we want a unit test? It's a code review of your own code. Code that is well written is also easy to unit test. Sloppy code is hard to unit test. It's good for quality, of course, because we're making sure that we've met the needs that the business requires. It's good for regression. In other words, make sure that when we change something, we don't break something somewhere else. And overall, it's just a good idea. Some plugins that we can use to help us on top of the typical JUnit include Makito, which we're going to talk about in this video, and then Echolemma for code coverage and JUnit Flux for running unit tests automatically. We'll cover those last two in later lectures. Mocking. This is where things get a little bit interesting because what we're going to do is we're going to mock away our dependencies. In other words, if you take a look at what we've written up to this point, uh, we have written a UI layer, and we've written a DAO layer, and a business logic layer. Our goal for this is to test the business logic layer or the service layer. But here's what's funny. If we take a look at our business logic layer and the method filter plants that we made in a previous exercise, we see that it has a dependency on this thing called plant DAO, a data access object from the DAO layer. But all we have is an interface. We don't have a class that implements that interface yet. So do we say, well, I can't unit test yet because I'm in charge of service. Someone else in is in charge of DAO. And the person in charge of DAO has not yet made a class that implements that interface. Can we say that's a reason for not unit testing? The answer is no, we can't use that as a reason. In other words, we can unit test even without these dependencies. And the way we're going to do it is through this thing called Makito. What we do is we pass a, a reference to the type of dependency that we have to this method called mock. Now this gets really interesting. What mock's going to do in the case of an interface is it's basically just going to make a dummy object that implements that interface. And then we say what that dummy object should do. So we say, okay, when we call something like can be simulated on this mock object, then we're going to return false. So we can programmatically say what this mocked object will do. I know that sounds kind of confusing. It's best to show with an example, which I promise I'll do in just a moment. With that mocked object, one nice thing is it keeps a count of the methods that we're calling and the parameters that we're passing into those methods. So we can verify that a method is called at least once with this parameter. We can verify that this method is called exactly this many times with this parameter, so on and so forth. So Makito does two things. First, it allows us to uh, create objects that don't exist or basically forget what our dependencies are, not worry about the dependencies. And number two, it allows us to verify that methods are called with certain arguments. So with that being said, let's have a look. What I'm going to do, uh, first of all, I need to add a couple of dependencies to my Maven. Uh, of course, I'm going to push this up to GitHub, so don't worry about typing this out directly. You can find it on GitHub, and I'll provide the link uh, in this video. So I'm going to grab these two dependencies, one for JUnit and the other for Makito. I'm going to add them to the dependency section of my POM. Okay, uh, a little control shift F to auto format an eclipse and save. Okay, now what I'm going to do, it's oftentimes a good idea to make a new package in our uh, 
in our current hierarchy that has the word test, just so we can keep our test separate from everything else. I'm going to go ahead and say new, and then I'm going to say class. And we're testing our service layer, so I'm going to give it a, a new package. I'm going to say com.plantplaces.service, but then I'm going to add .test on the end of that. For the name, I'm going to say test plant service. In JUnit version 3, we had to start our classes with the word test or end them with the word test. We no longer have to do that in JUnit 4, which is what I'm using here. But out of habit, a lot of times we still name it test. And I uh, finish. Uh, one thing I forgot to do is tell it to extend test case and save. Test case is the extend, sorry. Uh, test case is a JUnit class. So uh, control shift O, organize imports. And we see that sure enough, my POM entry worked because it was able to find this thing called test case. And I save. Okay, first of all, let's just figure out what a JUnit test is. Again, in the old days of JUnit 3, we would typically start our test methods with the word test. Uh, we no longer have to do that in JUnit 4. We just use the at test annotation, but still out of habit. A lot of times it's easy to start the method with test. So we'll say public void uh, test filter plants, something like that, something fairly descriptive. Uh, we're testing the method filter plants. Open and close paren, open curly, close curly. Uh, test is not recognized. Control shift O will import org.junit.test. And once again, save. Okay, now for JUnit, we have a series of asserts. I'm going to start typing assert and then hold control space and eclipse. That will show us all the overridden methods, or I'm sorry, overloaded methods that we have with assert. So we can assert that two things are equal. Typically, we'll put the expected on the left and the actual on the right. Um, we can assert that something's true. We can assert not null. We can fail. We can force fail something. A lot of things that we can do, but the most common thing we're going to do is an assert equals. I'm going to go to one that's just an assert true. And we're going to say assert true, true. So this is just a test to make sure that our JUnit passes. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click on test plant service and I'm going to say run as JUnit test. I'm expecting this to come across with a green bar, which means that it passed. And sure enough, we get a green bar. Now, what if I made something that would obviously fail? Assert true, false, and save. And then once again, right click, run as a JUnit test. And we see that it fails as we expect. So we have just determined that our uh, JUnit is working as we want. Now, I have more things I need to do here, but first I need to do a little bit of refactoring that I need to do for this JUnit test, but I would need to do it anyway, to be honest with you, because uh, it's just things that uh, I've needed to do for a little bit. First of all, my DTO called plant, I'm going to add a few more a few more attributes, private string genus, private string species, private string cultivar, and private string common. And then I'm going to right click and say generate getters and setters. Uh, right click source and generate getters and setters. Okay. And okay. And save. Okay. Um, next, one more I need to do in plant service. I have this uh, plant DAO. I'm going to control one this, and I'm going to say generate getter and setter for this. And there we go. Okay. And save. Okay. Now, at this point, my unit test is, is pretty close to be ready. So just a few things I'm going to do. We'll typically use given when then syntax. Uh, I no longer need this assert true, by the way. So given is going to set up our kind of our prerequisites. So I'm going to say given that plant service, the class we're testing, is populated with plant DAO. Okay, this is a method I'm making. You'll notice that um, 
uh, it's redlining because I don't have that method, but that's okay. I can control one and I can let Eclipse create that method. Okay, uh, next I'm going to say when filter with red, so the text red, then verify two results. Okay, so given when then, given are our preconditions, when is what we're doing, and then is our verify step. Okay, and save. At this point, I'm ready to get into Makito, but I will say I'm hitting about the 10 minute mark on this video. I like to keep things in that 10 to 15 minutes, and I know Makito is probably going to be 15 minutes of its own. I'm going to go ahead and pause this video, and I'm going to start a new video, which will pick up right at this point, which is when we're going to talk about Makito. I'll go ahead and save and build in the meantime, uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.